Well, there's been a lot of conversation surrounding the impact of General Motors' decision to idle and possibly close its Pole Town plant, and it's brought back the history of how the plant came to be and the bulldozing of a community 37 years ago to make way for a new plant the city said it desperately needed. And what happened with the Pole Town plant, the use of eminent domain, and the destruction of a neighborhood became an example in public policy for all time. And the painful fallout was captured in a documentary called Pole Town Lives. One Detroit senior producer Bill Kubota takes a look back with filmmaking George Corsetti. We're not against the plant. The plant can be there and the community can stay. Now I've got my deed in a house uh -huh. and they tell me that that property doesn't belong to me. The people weren't opposed to the plant. They were just opposed to the way the plant was being built. And I don't intend to move because you con artists are trying to pull a rip off. Well, it was an unusual situation because of this new quick take law, which allowed the city to take private property from individuals and give it to other private interests. General Moore says they want this land. They want it by such and such a date. And then Comey Young says, okay, we'll give you this land by such and such a date. The first offer they made was they, the city had a number of houses that they'd gotten through foreclosures, and they wanted the people in Poltown to just get one of those houses. We are now undergoing an economic crisis. I did like the mayor, I mean, and I still do, but I think he was also in a very difficult position trying to uh, take care of the financial needs of the city and the unemployment problem and so forth. The bottom line, of course, is to make this corporation as profitable as possible. Well, Mr. McDonald, a group of uh, businessmen recently said that uh, they were opposed to the GM plant in Poultown saying that it was uh, not free enterprise, but uh, essentially corporate socialism. Do you have any comments on that? Well, I'll tell you, when we take the property over and when we start uh, operating there, that's free enterprise. But you're also bulldozing the neighborhood, are you not? We're not doing it. They advertise the project as giving the city 6,000 jobs. A lot of people are leery because they're saying the GM is going to create all these jobs, and what um, has come out is that it's not going to be a job creation, but more a job retention because of all the automation that's going to go on. And I don't think they ever came even close to that. And recently, they've been operating with, I think, around 1,000 people, maybe even less than 1,000 people. Detroit's in desperate straits, sir. Mm. Yes, if it was in real desperate straits, they would use $300 million of the taxpayers' money to produce uh, more jobs, more diversified small industry in Detroit, rather than giving a $320 million package to the second richest corporation in the world. It was difficult for the people there to organize in opposition, and when Nader decided to come to Detroit, that was a big shot in the arm. This is not capitalism, this is corporate socialism. And they started turning things around. They would do things like take tractors over to General Motors, Chairman Smith's house and demolition crew and so on to sort of impress upon them that this was what was happening to these people. They're using the city of Detroit and the federal government to bulldoze the area and subsidize them uh, for the privilege of making a profit. But it worked. and. Um, the killer was when the Michigan Supreme Court decided that the, that the statute was constitutional. Demolition in Pole Town resumed with a vengeance when the state Supreme Court okayed the project. Arson and vandalism swept through the neighborhood. Well, all we're trying to do is protect our homes. They've been burning houses all, all in this neighborhood. The arson functioned as a way of terrorizing the neighborhood, and the rumor was that the arson was taking place because it was less expensive to demolish houses if they'd been burned. And no one was ever caught or prosecuted for the arson, which was rampant. A lot of those people had been there all their lives. I mean, they were born and raised there. How can they give up this neighborhood, you know? It's close to stores, close to buses, close to church. It's terrible what's happening, that's all. Especially the beautiful church. We belong to that church, 45 years. Ultimately, they were trying to save this church. Poltown residents and supporters decided to take the law into their own hands. They moved sleeping bags into the church basement, locked the doors, and occupied the church. When we heard this, we decided to try to go down to the church early in the morning, and I think we went down there around 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning, and the police were already blocking off access roads. These people responsible for this are worse than the communists in Poland. 
that's the message I gave before. I guess they couldn't understand it before. They might as well get it straight now. They already had lined up the demolition company. And the crack of dawn, as soon as those people were out of the church, the demolition company moved in, put fences all around the place, and proceeded to demolish it. And before midnight that night, they demolished the building. Well, that certainly was the clincher. The question I kept asking was, if you had it to do over, what would you do differently? They would say things like, we should have got in the streets a lot sooner than we did. And so they learned a lot, I think. But of course, by that time, it, they'd lost the fight. You look back at that decision and what a city did for jobs and a tax base at the time, and you have some of the same considerations today. The Detroit Regional Chamber just came out with its State of the Region report this week, and here's a look at a few of the numbers. They say that they're continuing the upward trajectory. So some of the good things were the medium home values between 2013 and 2017 grew 42 percent. The per capita income grew a little bit above the national rate, but we still have some really tough numbers when it comes to poverty in the region, um, educational attainment and the well-being index for our region is 145th in the country out of 189 communities. And participation in the workforce yeah. Yeah. Still, is, still is too many low. People not yeah. yeah, so I mean, kind of when you, when you look at some of those numbers, Nolan, what do you think? Well, I think they're better than they were a few years ago, where at least in most categories, headed in the right direction. But I think the key measure is education, workforce training. We still lag there. And I, I think until we catch up on those, we can't really make great strides in all the other categories. We also have this population growth, which is really, yeah, it's, it's still really slow. tough. It's just this, a but bit growing, of a blip. It's growing. It's growing. The, problem, the problem that we have but with not the population is, is in, other I mean, areas. other places are like yeah. booming That's and right. we're, we're not keeping, we're not keeping pace. I mean, part of the, the, the what you sort of see emerge from the report is uh, uh, that we, we finally have some progress on mm -hmm. some things that we hadn't for a really long time, but we had been so far behind that overall yeah. our place hasn't moved that much. So we're moving in the right direction, but other places are moving faster and we're still moving, we're still trying to creep back to where we were. And so we're just now we're getting just, back uh, to, in, in terms of total jobs, where we were in 2008. 2008. Well, yeah. embrace yourself for what economically we could be facing now in the next couple of years and, where, mean, and where and where we go. Maybe we could keep going up. We don't, you, yeah. you don't know. But yeah. we, we, especially when you're talking about home sale prices and things like that, um, we will suffer more than other communities when the economy does cool off on some of those things because of the weird yeah. dynamics in this community around those things. All, a lot of the sales in Detroit, for instance, uh, are cash sales. Those will go away yeah. when the next recession hits. All right, and you can see uh, the Chamber's entire report. We'll have that on our website.